It's a special guest episode of the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King. Joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krauss. And also joining us is our special guest, Kaizen MN. Welcome. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Mr. Flynn, Mr. Krauss, honored pleasure to talk with both of you. Excellent. We're, we're misters now. We're important people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Oh, no. I don't know. If, I don't know if I like that. I don't want to be important, Ian. <laughs> help help me. I don't know how to be important. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, but we're both beyond help. Kaizen, who are you? Why have you graced the Bumblecast with your personable presence? Well, uh, I'm Kai. I go by Kaizen Amen on YouTube. Uh, y'all can just call me Kai, uh, both of you and anyone else in chat. Um, I make video essays about Sonic, video games, comics, anime, and all that lovely pop culture jazz. I also edit videos for Fidel Games Cage and Aru, if you know who those two are. And yeah, I just wanted to thank the both of you. I love this show, love what y'all do. This podcast has been a part of my daily routine for a while now, and just wanted my thank you to be personal. I couldn't really fit that into a message, so I wanted to deliver it in person. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, so yeah, your work, Ian, has had a massive impact on my life. I've been a fan since I was a kid. Uh, went to the Toys R Us near my grandma's house that had a Sonic comic book action figure pack. It had little Sonic, little Amy, and issue 207, which is in the middle of the Iron Queen arc, I think. And th- that's such a wild issue to be thrown into <laughs> if you had never <laughs> seen Sad AM before. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was like the most current issue that focused on Amy and Sonic. So it's like, yeah, sure, we'll use that one. Yeah, I was constantly going, who's this character? Who's that character? And I was I was like, didn't know who Nicole or Sally was, but I was like, I just loved how different it was from the games in Sonic X. And then a few months later, I uh, got an iPhone and wanted to buy some comics on the digital store. And I remember seeing the ad for the first few arcs of Sonic Universe uh, in 207. And I saw the Shadow Saga and I was like, ooh, I'll start with that. And then I was, I've, I've been a fan ever since. Loved Archie for the rest of its run after that. Been a fan of IDW since the jump. I think you, Evan Stanley, and everyone on that creative team just wear your love and passion for the franchise on your sleeves, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I've been consistently entertained and excited by the stories. I loved what it did at Frontiers. You made me cry twice. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I got to feel things. <laughs> And uh, I, I can't wait to see what happens in the DLC. I'm so excited for that. And uh, and Kyle, you bring such a fun light and balance to the show. Sometimes because you stay on topic and other times because you don't and you ride that line beautifully. <laughs> well, you know, somebody's got to do it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You just bring such a wonderful complimentary energy that helps make this such a pleasure to turn into every week. And Thank you both for everything you do and the enthusiasm you bring with each episode. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> this is now my favorite episode of the Bumblecast. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. Go yeah. with that. Also, also, y'all in chat and the Discord peeps, all of you have been so welcoming and unbelievably kind. Uh, y'all were so lovely to me on my first day here. Like, y- y'all are great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Our Discord community is a lot of fun. So, yeah. Very, very big like- thanks to them. <laughs> I'll just I'll just get a notification sometimes and just see a spree of messages and I'm just like I don't even know how it started or got on this tangent but this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. We have a great community. I'm I'm very I'm very glad. <laughs> All right. So, I got a bunch of different questions. The first half is more Q&A, latter being more discussion based. Also, I apologize in advance if some of these are repeats. Uh of stuff you've answered before. I did my best to cross reference with the master list, but that can be a bit of a fuster cluck to navigate. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You are absolutely correct. And given the thousands of questions from just last year alone, there's going to be reboots. Like it used to be, Oh, you should check the master list. So we're not repeating or something. Like, yeah, dude, whatever. The master list is kind of there out of formality's sake, but just ask. Cause I don't yeah. remember. Kyle doesn't remember who remembers. <laughs> we don't care. Just in, in some cases, away. in some cases, the answer has even changed. It's been so long. Yeah. So yeah. yeah so yeah, I noticed that like some of them, the answers changed or, or, or some of them, some of them were like, 
um he'll answer this at a later date and then it links back to like a question from two years ago that said he'll answer back at a later date. <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah pretty much and i was like oh god this is he'll answer lateception <laughs> oh boy yeah yeah it's it's crazy just how much the show has uh exploded in a good way <laughs> mm, definitely. it's not imploded yet yet <laughs> only exploded we haven't reached critical mass yet no 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 not yet <laughs> <laughs> just the two people in check on beverage far <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm glad Pepperidge Farm remembers all our questions because we sure as hell don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm ready when y'all are for questions. Go for oh, it. Please lead off. Okay. All right. So my first question is for Kyle. How did you meet Ian and what was his pitch for you to do the Bumblecast? Well, let's see. How did I meet Ian? Well, we met through uh, Aaliyah, actually. Aaliyah is a good friend of mine going back 20 years at this point. So um, I met her through uh, Overclocked Remix, the forums on Overclocked Remix. Wow. And we started talking there. And then uh, she introduced me to Ian. And this was pre-Sonic. You were just you were just Ian. You weren't the Sonic guy yet. I mean, you were the Sonic, Sonic guy in the fandom, but you weren't the Sonic guy. So and then a couple of years, you after a couple of years, you uh, ended up getting on the comic, and uh, I pretty much followed you from the start. We were we kind of spoke on and off a bit, and then in 2015, I decided, hey, I want to go to Toronto, see my friends who live in Toronto. I want to go to Canada, so I did, and that's when I met. Uh, or, well, I actually no, you know what? I actually met you in person first. At uh, San Diego Comic Con. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But that was such a swirl of action. It's like, oh, hey, you're Kyle. And then, you know, it was crazy. I can't tell you what day that was, what hour that was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit, it, that was a bit of a crazy time. But, uh, but we did have you, uh, you did stay over at my place one night and then we took you to the airport. So there was that. Um, but, then going over and actually going to Toronto and meeting you guys there and staying there for staying with you guys for a little bit. That was how uh, we came to the Bumblecast, basically. Ian, you asked me if how you, you kind of asked me how to do a podcast. Well, see, and, you'd been running KNGI for so long. Yeah. It's like this guy knows his stuff, like not only KNGI, but multiple projects on OCR. It's like if anybody's going to know how to do this, it's gonna be him. Yeah, you want it back in my mind. You, I'm like, do, do I dare ask for him to help? Do, am I high enough on the echelon to even <laughs> deign to ask such a thing of this man, this <laughs> god of the internet radio waves? Which is so like, like, I'm just, another, I'm gonna try to play, play it cool, try to be casual. So, uh, God, you're you're like really good at KNGI. Um. <sighs> How would one go about doing a podcast? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to be interested at all, maybe possibly. Mm-hmm, maybe. <laughs> See, what's really funny about that is I'm like, <laughs> I am not, I do not feel in any way like I am, <laughs> like, on a, should be on a pedestal in that fashion. <laughs> You it's ran just one of the first internet radio shows and one of the longest running ones, sir. You are on a pedestal, whether you like it or not. It's just yeah, weird. We talk about the anniversary recently. I was like, wow, you've been doing it for that long. That's crazy. Yeah, I know it, it is. I'm I'm a crazy person. I I just <laughs> I, I I refuse to stop, no matter how many people tell me I should, which is nobody. All wrong. Which is nobody, luckily. But yes, <laughs> I'm sure someone's thinking it. <laughs> But like, but like, really the, the, about it. but like the fact you were at, you were, you're asking, you were hesitant to ask me. I'm like, I'm just a guy, dude. Just, I'm, <laughs> I'm just I'm, a guy, and I'm just like, I'm just like, oh, wow, this is Ian Flynn. Ian Flynn is asking me to do a show with him. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> Ian Flynn is like a, he's kind of a big deal. Like, people like Ian. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna, I'm, I mean, I'll ride his coattails. I'm okay with that. 
<laughs> and I felt really guilty because this was, you know, your big vacation, just taking a break from everything. I'm like, so Kyle, you want a, a new job? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if it's working with you, yes, absolutely, I do. <laughs> so so like on the car ride to Buffalo to get you to your flight, we were like going through music samples going, okay, would this be a good theme? I don't know about that. How about this one? How about this one? Yeah, yeah. We settled on the original Bumblecast theme on that drive. I think so. Yep. And we we just we came up with some good stuff and uh now we're here. This is where we are. <laughs> and we've been doing this for what? Almost 8 years? Oh lord, really? I think so. Something like that. Like we started off pretty slow, only doing one episode every 2 weeks. Now we're doing Six episodes all these shows. every two weeks, <laughs> at least six episodes <laughs> every two shows weeks. all the time. Yeah, which is like crazy. So I, I, th- I think that's about the overall. That just about covers it. I don't know if you have anything you want to fill in the gaps with on Ian, but that's that's about that's about how it came together. Yep, just two bumbling schmucks falling face first into success. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. I love how both of you view like the merging of this concept being, being being like, I feel like I'm just the guy in this position. Meanwhile, like I'm in this call, literally having that feeling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the guy in this situation. <laughs> no, it's good. It's all good. We're just a bunch of guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Next question uh, for both of you. What are your top three favorite video game franchises for their music? Ooh. Mm. Mm. You're saying Sonic a cop out. I feel like it should be. Like, should no, be other than Sonic. Absolutely. Like, not. <laughs> I feel like this should be other than Sonic because Sonic is kind of a given. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Th- that's fair. Okay. Then, then I would have to think of my third because my three if Sonic was included, would have been Sonic, Persona, and Guilty Gear. Oh, Persona's, Persona and Guilty that. Gear are so... Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, like, Sonic, its misses are the notable thing. You know, it's just kind of generally accepted Sonic has good music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, just because it's the only thing I really have had time to play lately, but Genshin Impact has an astounding soundtrack. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. Not just the individual tracks, but just the quantity of them is staggering. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say Skies of Kitty, but it's not really a franchise if it's a single game. <laughs> No, 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 that, that, that is not a cop out. You are totally allowed to say skies of Arcadia. All right. then. <laughs> that's, that's... Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, that's not a problem. Yeah. No, I know. I'm I know there's only one all. game technically, but it's yeah, in two it's games. Just... So that counts. Yeah. The, the Super second game is the first cheated. game. Uh, I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, it is a bunch of, it's primarily, you know, remixes and remasters, mm-hmm. but the sheer wealth of it, especially in ultimate given the history, the the museum that it is. Yes. yes. Should get an honorable mention at the very least. Yeah, yeah. It it, it feels like a pantheon in Ultimate. I'm seeing so many really good answers. Mega Man X, Zelda, Kingdom Hearts, Xenoblade. Yeah, there's some really good answers in here. Yeah, I'm going to go with Mega Man as one of my other, mine. Mm -hmm. Mega Man, definitely. I have to, I have to give that one. Um, God, what else? I mean, Guilty Gear is so good. So good. And it's crazy how long it stayed good. Like, I remember when I really kind of got into Guilty Gear and started learning about the legacy of its music. Like, Mm -hmm. it is crazy how consistently amazing those soundtracks have been over the decades at this point. I think that's just because Daisuke Ishibatari is kind of a genius. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, I mean, especially musically, but even as far as like character design and stuff, the guy is Mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. He's very, very good. That's why I would, I would, I would kind of consider blaze blue, like kind of even part of guilty gear, the guilty gear pantheon, at least musically, because blaze blue has such good music in the same, it's a similar vein to guilty gear. Totally agree. Um, 
God, Here's and, a good one in the chat. Castlevania. Castlevania. Yes. Oh yes. No, that actually ties into my next question. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. Looks out really, really good. Yeah. Castlevania, Guilty Gear, and Mega Man for me. I think are going to be are going to go for the three in terms of those. So good. So good. If if I have to do three, I think I think I would just do those three. <laughs> but there's so many. Yeah. There's so many good options that are coming up in the chat. Uh, Chad's coming up with Undertale, and you know what? I might have to put that one on the list for sure because every single track, every rendition of it, comes with a memory or an emotion or both. Yep, yep. That is undeniable. Yeah, like, the music in that is just so incredibly interwoven with mm-hmm. everything that that game does. So, <sighs> yeah, I mean, and, you know, and, anything and- that. Yoko Shimomura touches his gold. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, Street Fighter, those those songs are like formative. They're still in the franchise today. So, yeah. And I mean, the Mana series and Kingdom Hearts and everything she's done. Ah, so good. So good. Masterclass. Yes. All right. So to tie into uh, Castlevania that Dove put in the chat. It was actually my next next question. So Dove, you are 200 IQ. Thank you. Uh, both of you have referenced Castlevania on this show, and I wanted to know if you've seen it. What are your thoughts on the Netflix animated series? Overall, I thought it was entertaining. Um, yeah. I feel like after they finished adapting the game, specifically Castlevania three. I feel like it got a little aimless, but it was still interesting. <laughs> and it's definitely a good looking show. Like I do quite enjoy the art style and uh, it, it's, yeah. it's, pre- it's good. I like it, but there was a lot of missed potential, especially musically. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like definitely it's so. a Castlevania show. Where's the Castlevania tunes? <laughs> It was only like, during the Siege of the Castle in season two, right? Like, that was the like, only like Yeah, movie. yeah. It's like Bloody Tears. Using yeah. Bloody Tears once doesn't count. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> if you, and it's not even, it's not even the right game. Like, this is supposed to be an adaptation of Castlevania 3. Why are you using a tune from Castlevania 2? <laughs> Please. <laughs> kind of along the same wave. Like, it, it was entertaining. Like, I enjoyed the ride, but. The liberties it took with the lore, from my understanding, did kind of rankle here and there, and there were some serious pacing issues Yeah, throughout. Now, part of that was just the way that they were funded and structured. You can't really avoid yeah. some of that. But yeah. Because season it, it, one doesn't even feel like a season. It just feels like a movie that was just chopped into four bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a pilot movie, yeah. Yeah. I would say its highest of highs outweighs its lowest of lows. It's worth a watch, to be sure. Mm-hmm. Not my favorite series, but you know, I do appreciate a piece of adult animation that doesn't rely on purely humor. You know, it's a it's an adult action adventure horror series, and you don't really get a lot of that with Western animation, or at least Western funded animation. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's what I'd love about it because I was, I think, freshman year of college when it came out. And I just remember seeing the trailer for it and going, well, because I remember they posted the trailer and then shortly after they posted uh, the clip of Dracula's massacre from the first episode. And I'm just like, this is a thing that exists like, in, <laughs> like, in M, like an M rated anime inspired Castlevania show. Like I was just so on board for the premise. And I, I think just throughout the show, uh, yeah, for Kyle's point. Yeah, there were sh- certain shots where. I was just like, if you took the characters out of it and just told me this was a real piece, I would believe you. Like the background designers of that show, there's some immaculate scenery in uh, in Castlevania, and I just always really liked the the characterization for certain people, like how they took what was there in Castlevania Three and were able to make Trevor and Sypha and Alucard feel super fleshed out of the complete way that they flip Isaac. And how he's so different from everything that had come before. But I feel just such an engaging character and goes on such a cool, compelling arc. Yeah, I did Castlevania. Yeah, yeah. I think overall I enjoyed it. But, I mean, it definitely has issues. But And I could definitely criticize it. But overall, I think I enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to 
I guess there's more. <laughs> yeah, Nocturne so, with Richter. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be that should be interesting. See how that goes. Who put, who put that cop pedantic cat now a picture exotic versus Dracula? And Twilight <laughs> immediately replies, "Storybook question mark." Yeah. I hmm. <laughs> Castlevania and Sonic. Hmm. Hmm. That's Sonic eventually becomes the stand-in for Von Helsing. Yeah, Sonic and the Rondo of Blood. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Got a bleed, was, Keed. Killing it tonight. <laughs> Guys are on fire. Oh man! All right. In games like Sonic Adventure Two, Big the Cat appears in the background of several stages, and we see in Frontiers that he is able to fish within cyberspace. My question is, how do you think Big gets around? How is he able to break into an ancient technological construct like cyberspace? Does he have warp rings? Does he get around using chaos control in his spare time? Or does Big simply have eldritch cosmic power that we mere mortals cannot begin to comprehend? Big is. <laughs> where, where, do, how does Big get where he is? Big is just, Big is there. Big is where he wants to be. That's really what it boils down to. He's just there. Where is big? Yes. Yes. When is big? Yes. <laughs> yes. Why is big? Very yes. <laughs> That's the answer I wanted. That's perfect. <laughs> when is big? I mean, he's always big. <laughs> but yes, big is just big is there. Big is big is our benevolent overlord, and you do not question how he does the, anything you shouldn't because i mean you you shouldn't I mean, how does he do all this what is the explanation we don't know he is simply natural that's right <laughs> how does he lift a car like that i don't know who cares <laughs> <laughs> love that love that Th that that was the exact type of answer that i was hoping for so that just nailed it okay good Okay. Um, I love the character arcs the main cast go through in Frontiers, and Amy struck a chord with me. I loved seeing her selflessness and care for others on display, as well as a new goal on the horizon for her. With Sonic being a symbol of freedom, was the goal to have Amy's arc end with her seeking to be a symbol of love in a similar way, or did you view it more simply than that? Amy's story, I feel, actually was a little muddled in its messaging and presentation, because that was the one where we had the most discussion, shall we say, on what to say and how to say it. So it's left a fair bit open-ended to be explored at a later date, because it was not, it was, my, my main goal was to give Amy a drive outside of Sonic, but was still very true to everything that had come before. And so gotcha. wanting, fixating on her love and compassion for others and wanting to see that expand beyond just her own personal affections was the kind of wide net that I cast. And, you know, if that stuck, if that was well received, then hopefully, you know, they will pick up and run with that torch. I hope I get to be involved with that in the future but you know a lot of frontiers was me you know planting seeds hoping that they will bear fruit in the future awesome awesome and yeah i, I definitely have seen some of the criticisms of amy's arc and i def and i think that also kind of combines with how chronos is kind of a tutorial island so like her storytelling is kind of intermixed with what you're learning about the island and also just learning how to play the game. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So yeah, I enjoyed it for one. <laughs> I'm one of the few people who is like, I've loved this since day one. Love what they did with Amy. Well, I'm glad to see Amy get a little bit more development and hopefully move beyond just Sonic. So I, I'm looking forward to uh, where she goes. Also looking forward to Sticks. Thank you, Ian, for oh my God. pushing yes. name dropping sticks. <laughs> yes, and th th that's a that's a question later. <laughs> whether any later whether question. anything comes yeah. out of it or not, I'm, I'm still glad. Thank you. <laughs> I just love the concept of those three being the next team. Rose, you have the mother, the child, and the crackhead, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> I <think it's> <laughs> 
He is. He is. Crazy ant. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like when the Convergence animation was uh, put into production? Was was it called Convergence? I can't, I can't remember what the specific name was. Uh, no, but, uh, Convergence was the comic. Divergence was the animation. Divergence. Okay, gotcha. Um, I know with Knuckles being one of your faves, what was the creative process for that like? I absolutely loved it and hope we see more animations like that going forward in Sonic games. Oh, God, I hope so. Um, let's see. It was uh, not sure how much I can pull back the curtain on it, but it was pitched internally as a desired project. And I was tapped for that because I was writing the game as well. So, you know, who else would know where to put it and how best to coordinate it? Oh, there's so many little fun factoids, but I don't know what I can say. And there, there was a lot of back and forth within the lore group, because uh, I believe that department spearheaded the initiative, uh, just going over the script and what we were showcasing and how best to word things, um, how we wanted to showcase Knuckles and what we wanted to establish. And then after the script was done, it was handed off to uh, Tyson Hess and powerhouse studios. And I was out of the loop. I didn't know what was going on. I, my job was done and it was in their very capable hands. And I got the preview video just to like get some last minute feedback on it. And I got misty eyed because that's my boy knuckles was back in rare form and it looked gorgeous and he was amazing and it was everything i wanted to see in a sonic animation since like sonic x episode one <laughs> and the fact that i got to help with that is just amazing can't agree more i, I got misty eyed too i i think that tyson and team just they brought such a vibrance and life to angel island that i didn't even mm. know i needed <laughs> it's also fun to see uh because there's little moments in there that were not scripted and i know they were tyson's additions because i know his sense of humor and you know i've been a huge fan of his art and his storytelling for the mm -hmm. longest time so you know i can put on the fanboy goggles and go up ah, ah, that's that's one of his that's one of his and i love it <laughs> like the bit where uh the the one robot kind of teeters on the edge and then the rock knocks it over 100% Tyson that's got to be him that you did love it I you love didn't it. write that <laughs> no 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 that was not in the script and I am certain it's his and I freaking love it because it's the the timing of it is just perfect <laughs> uh, the, the, the two what lines makes Tyson so good on the movies he just gets it I know like yeah yeah like you you mentioned. Evan and myself earlier, but Tyson is another one of us. It, just someone oh, yeah. who loves the oh, franchise, yeah. and you can clearly see it in everything that he touches. And I, I don't know the two lines. I don't care if I wrote this. I just I love the delivery and I love the staging of it. But where you know Knuckles has first been transported and he's yelling to the sky, he's like, you know, we'll settle this in a fair fight. And when I win, like, just no bragging. <laughs> yeah. That's just exactly how he sees yeah. it playing out because he knows he's the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then he gets jumped and you know you have that rotating camera and he pounds his fist together oh ambush huh your funeral it's like, oh <laughs> that yes so cool. <laughs> that's it that is exactly how the line should be delivered i love it love it love it give me more of this hook it directly into my eye holes 24 <laughs> 7 uh knuckles threatened to murder a person cool <laughs> i mean it is cool i'm down <laughs> Yeah, I, I just loved everything <laughs> that Knuckles got, anything remotely Frontiers related. Like, I, I love when uh, he meets Sage and he, he's he's in between realms and he's just blocking laser blasts like it's nothing. I'm just like, <laughs> who do you think you are? I love you. <laughs> that was actually something that came in from on high when we were first getting Frontiers up and running, like very first meeting to discuss That's stuff. Amazing. One of the notes was, you know, Knuckles has been played very comedic re over the past few years, and they wanted a more concentrated effort to make him serious and cool again. And I'm like, yes, very much. Yes. Total agreement. We are perfectly in sync. Onward, forward. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. 
I'm ready for I'm ready for Knuckles to be badass again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We kind of felt that a lot last year, too, just with the way he was in movie two. And then it felt, felt like a really good year for Knuckles. And I'm excited to see how the, the Paramount spinoff show is going to be. Still mm-hmm. haven't heard about it yet. They still play him for comedy a little bit in the second movie. But you know what? I'm OK with that. I, I like a little bit of I like a little bit of comedy, but still also an ass kicker. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I finding I think it's finding the right balance. Yeah. Like Boom yeah. Knuckles was the extreme. Well, That's yeah. the dumb meathead and it was fun in Boom. Not going to lie. But I feel like Prime Knuckles is at his best when he is the straight foil to all these other bubbly happy go get him characters, especially a wise ass like Sonic. Yeah. Mhm. Definitely. So he's not an idiot, he's just very straightforward. Yes. Yeah. That, that that's how I always viewed him especially in SA one and two is just, it's like, he's like kind of leaning on foolish, but it's more just blunt. He's just very straightforward. Yeah. Real salt of the earth type. Yep. Definitely. All right. How did Tangle and sticks get name drop mentions in frontiers? Was it as simple as asking the question or was it a more complicated process? I cannot put into words how ecstatic I was to hear their names in an official game. I can't wait to see the future of those characters. That was as simple as asking. Um, Really? And I made sure to ask, like, I didn't try to sneak <laughs> it in there. It was, you know, because there w- we were already talking in other departments and in other groups about where IDW fit into everything. And the decision was moving more towards make it all one cohesive brand, one universe. So I said, you know, to you know facilitate that, if there's an opportunity where it would make sense, where it isn't really too jarring can we do some name drops and they were like yeah i mean shoot i didn't even know if the incidental lines in the field would even be used it was a pitched idea i also thought the islands were going to be much larger i thought there was going to be more um downtime in between events because i was when the initial concept was pitched to me i was thinking something like you know breath of the wild where you would have these expanses where you just kind of enjoy nature as you go between your points and then the final product, it's, you know, much more compact. Mm-hmm. So that affected how everything played out in the end. <laughs> but uh, I am glad that some of the lines made it, however they get triggered. And uh, again, planting seeds. We'll see if they germinate. We'll see if they turn into anything. I hope so. I was so excited because I, I, I'm kind of glad that the triggers for them are kind of weirder frontiers because I was just running around in just a random spot on Kronos. And then I heard the tangle line. I was just like, <laughs> like I had to pause the game because I didn't know how to react. Cause I just didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> I love tangle so much. The tangle jump scare. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. When that was, when clips of that were starting to crop up, I'm like, yeah, Ian Flynn, you sly dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, Professor Scruffy Matt, I I screamed as well at the mention of Maria. Yeah, the egg memos. It felt, especially in the latter half of them, it just felt like every other one. I was just going, "What are they doing? <laughs> like, what, what are they setting up right now?" I was just every single other one. I was just like. I love this so much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're, we're, we're actually, uh, you know, looking back at the franchise and things that happened previously. And yes. Wow. Amazing. It just, it's all connected. It's, it's actually all connected. Maybe finally for once continuity. Yes. I'm th- amazing. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was, feeling was great. That was another direction from on top from the very beginning is they wanted a story that felt like it was part of a greater whole not just another standalone game Mm -hmm. and they said you've been doing this for a while you know your interconnected sonic story stuff bring it to the game it's like (laughs) you have unlocked the shackles (laughs) (laughs) and uh my one of the major objectives i had was to make it feel like it was part of that it was the next chapter in a very long ongoing saga and then to go back and say, see, 
this really was a big story all along. Never mind all the cracks in the road. It really is one big Sonic story. <laughs> well, you know, it's not the first time you've had to do that. <laughs> yeah, as a fan to be able to experience that, it just felt so cathartic. E- even when the references felt so just, like, just so unexpected. Like when it, it uh, when Eggman mentions, I think in the third memo that um cyberspace has traces of the of the donpa kingdom i was like i was like wait team sonic racing is it this <laughs> i was I, I was mind blown at just how in depth it was it, it just felt like it didn't matter what era what game it felt like if you loved a specific sonic thing you were represented in frontiers in some way through the lore of that story and that just felt really good I like this one from the chat. Sega telling Ian to use his knowledge is like Captain America telling Hulk to smash stuff. <laughs> <laughs> With an equivalent Perfect. amount of grace, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on who you ask, I suppose. <laughs> Ian Lore! <nah! laughs> Love That's it. my secret cap. I'm always nerdy. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was good. It was good. The I Am speech you wrote for Shadow in Archie issue 171 is to date my favorite piece of dialogue written for the character. Shadow talking about being a union of dark ideals built in the name of love is such a powerful testament that nails why fans love him. How did you come up with this version of the speech? Was it basing it off of the various endings from Shadow the Hedgehog the game? Was it restructuring the character to fit to co- the context of the Archie story? Or was there another reason that speech resonates so much? Something more personal in the writing process. I'm glad you liked it because I was afraid it was a little heavy handed. Um, oh, God, I love when it's heavy handed. <laughs> <laughs> no I mean, wonder you love Frontiers. I mean, honestly, yeah. if it's if it's not heavy handed, it's not Sonic as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly how I feel about it. Yeah. Uh, the thing was with that particular story, Shadow's origin and implementation had been very archie sonic up to that Mm -hmm. point Mm -hmm. and one of my primary goals when i came onto the archie book was to make it more recognizable to the mainstream sonic crowd so to bring it a little closer in line with the game material while also honoring what had come before because there's a reason why this book had been 160 plus issues yeah we loved it i just wanted to make it more accessible to everybody so that speech was kind of the period to the thesis that was that issue, which was here is shadow and he is a culmination of all these weird and different interpretations up to this point. And now this is who he is and that's who he will be going forward. And I loved it. I loved it. I, I thought everything about the way that he really got to move forward. It just gave me all the satisfaction that I think the ending of the shadow, the hedgehog, the game kind of lacked where he makes his decision and you're just kind of like, Oh, okay, I guess. But also you're just confused (laughs) because, because of all of the different endings and all of the different paths you can go down where you can be very good or very evil or anything in between to just have that ending where it didn't feel as satisfying or conclusive where I just love that moment. And just with that dialogue, it just feels like, okay, that's who he is. That's who he wants to be. That's the beacon he wants to represent. I love him. Okay. Let's see. Next question. Um, My favorite comic line from Archie was Sonic universe. I feel like it got a lot of creative freedom to tell unique stories and character arcs that couldn't fit into mainline. Do you have a favorite arc that you enjoyed writing most? My personal three faves are Shadow Saga, Treasure Team Tango, and Shadowfall. Mm-hmm. Shadowfall came together very nicely. So much that, fun. That mm-hmm. was satisfying. And was one of those stories where I know I've said it before on the show, but it was one of those ones where uh, the direction and restrictions from the licensor made the story better. Um, from the original Shadow arc in Universe... Um, I think it was number two. Is that the one with Gamma and Omega? Uh, that was three. Three? Okay. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> no uh, problem. That's why I've read the books to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that one really resonates with me because it was a story that I really, really wanted to tell on a personal nerdy level, 
because Gamma's story was so not done in the Archie books. And oh, yeah, that was so weird. I remember reading Sonic Adventure, like the Archie adaptation. I was just like, my boy, <laughs> what have they done with him? <laughs> It's it's they like DBC Bridge Kai three. Technically, I didn't <laughs> die in this version. <laughs> it massacred my boy. But uh, <laughs> it it just came together really well, mm-hmm. and like what I envisioned in my head was pretty much exactly what Tracy put on the page. He's and... so damn good. He's so damn good. <laughs> I got spoiled on Tracy because, and I know I've said this before too, but we worked together for so long. I got kind of lazy with the scripts and it's like, okay, I know Tracy's going to draw it this way. Oh, somebody else is drawing it. Oh shoot. I need to be a little more descriptive. <laughs> uh Oh, we can't just assume that Tracy is going to divine what I want and put it on the page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happens. It happens. And I, I, I've, it's funny because my favorite Sonic Universe arcs are the ones Ian didn't write. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, what what was your fave? What was your fave? Well, my favorites are Spark of Life and Pirate Ponder Panic. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Neither of which Ian wrote. So, <laughs> not to say I don't like like uh, plenty of arcs that Ian also wrote, but you know. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, of, I love it's kind of ironic. That, um, <laughs> I love the silver one. Oh my god, the silver one was. So oh good. yeah, yeah, that's another one of my favorites. Also, another one Ian didn't write. <laughs> yeah. Evan, it, it it felt like she she just got like she she just got the green light. She's like everything I've always loved about this character. I'm just going to give this everything. <laughs> yeah, I think it was her dream assignment, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, silver. Okay. <laughs> It was also a moment where she did a major tip of the hat because in one of the Sonic, uh, smaller Sonic stories, I think in one of the digests, we had Silver talking with Von Schlimmer about time travel. And in her story, the same scene played out and she basically just copied one for one that scene so it would remain in proper continuity. And it's like... Mm. Oh, that is an attention to detail that I respect so much. Mm-hmm. Smart. Oh man, yeah. people she, who ma- she's always gone above and beyond with her work. The people who've made these books are so smart. How do they do it? <laughs> How are they so smart? I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> what, what was that image that was just put? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Our guest is paying oh, too much attention God. to the chat. <laughs> Because the chat is funny. I mean, <laughs> it, I mean, it, I mean, it. I mean, it is. It is the chat. The chat. God, is. I, I had to, I had to see that panel in forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, it's ridiculous. Focus. focus. <laughs> all right. uh, your characterization of Shadow, particularly in Archie Mainline and Sonic Universe, has been my favorite iteration of the character to date. I love how underneath his edgy broodiness, there's a core of empathy and a desire to be ultimate, but in the service of others. My question is if you got the opportunity to evolve Shadow's character, like Tails, Knuckles, and Amy did in Frontiers, would you follow a route similar to what was done in Archie, or would you want to take Shadow's character in a new direction that explores aspects that haven't been touched on before? That is a hard question to consider since Shadow is on an especially tight leash. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why him in particular, but I, having worked within those con constraints, I see an appeal of having him be a dark analog to Sonic where there are so many parallels, the indomitable spirit, the, uh, lack of any care for authority Mm -hmm. driven by their own particular sense of justice. It's just Sonic is, you know, open and playful and bouncy and gregarious. He turns friends, foes into friends and, you know, helps anyone along the way. Whereas Shadow is not. He is very standalone. He is not open. He is severe, but he is no less heroic. It's just on his own terms. It's it's tricky to do that without him being callous, Mm -hmm. but it is interesting. and. There is something to be said for that interpretation instead of the one that was, you know, 
truly noble and heroic in Archie Sonic, just with a bit of a grump. So I don't know. I think it's at least worth exploring a bit more uh, as things develop on Sega's end. Cool. Yeah, because I also wanted to tie that into because I remember uh, recently Evan was talking about how um, when she was given the notes back on writing for uh, issue 59 that Sega actually let her be a little bit more loose with the characterization of Shadow. And that was really exciting to to hear that, that may, maybe things are going to start to change. <laughs> and, and then the other notes from the next issue came in. Oh, God. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, don't don't expect a tectonic shift with his character okay more i wasn't more like i wasn't expecting glacial one. drift just, yeah <laughs> yeah because because well, because that's what twitter wants like they want the complete just like they want everything to happen immediately but yeah if, if he's just a little bit more I don't know if playful is the word, but just, but just a little little bit less <laughs> condescending. A little less of a stick up his butt. That would be good. Mm-hmm. Constantly. Constant. Yeah. But I'm excited. Um, I, I remember reading 58 and just seeing the way that it ended. And you see Team Dark and just being like, oh, Maku is back. <laughs> that was just really exciting. <laughs> If you got the opportunity to do another Worlds Collide style event and IDW gave you the green light to combine Sonic with any other IP, what would be your dream crossover crossover event to write for? I feel like we owe it to everyone to do a Sonic Mario. Oh, yes. (laughs) I mean, that would probably be a nightmare in approvals, but Mm -hmm. I mean, it's what everyone wants. There are other crossovers that would be fun to be sure, you know, a, a remix of the Mega Man one, although we did it right the first time. I don't really know how you do it again, but, uh, you know, of, it would be fun to do it with Star Fox. It'd be fun to pair them up with just about any other franchise out there. But I think the one everyone wants to see more than anything else is Mario. Mm-hmm. Like they want a Sonic and Mario adventure, not a sporting event an actual adventure. It it still blows my mind that the Olympic Mario and Sonic games have gone on as long as they have. And those are the pretty much the only games outside of Smash Brothers where Mario and Sonic could interact that way. I'm just like, wow. Apparently <laughs> how, we... how is this the world that we live in where <laughs> this is the franchise that we got for this combination? <laughs> Apparently it's a Miyamoto thing. He didn't want Sonic and Mario, I guess on a platformer together so their compromise was you i guess we'll do an olympics tie-in that, that is like wild what? and hilarious <laughs> i mean <laughs> I, I i guess i mean yuji yuji naka apparently is like yeah it, it was miyamoto because he was like pl- all planning on making like an actual sonic mario platformer crossover and then miyamoto's like well we don't really we re- obviously we really don't want to make a crossover platformer with these two characters, and Yuji Naka's like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it is a very interesting decision. Yeah, uh, I I don't know, I don't really care for it. I I really think they really need to do a proper crossover already because it's so ridiculous that. That's all they've got. Is so the, much money. It's the Olympic one. So ones. much money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The fact that this, yeah, the fact that Mario got a proper crossover with the freaking Rabbids before he did with Sonic is insane. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and, and also, oh god. <laughs> Yeah, you just had to mention that. There like, just has to be a Rabbits mention. <laughs> it's like why, why, why did that happen before anything else? Why? Yeah. They didn't even have to make a platformer necessarily, but why didn't it have to be a, a licensed <laughs> Olympic sports mini game? It's like, why? Why? Oi. No why. But yeah, Mario Sonic, I think would be great. And I didn't even, Sonic and Star Fox, yeah, that would be really interesting. Sonic and Star Fox has so much potential. That's that, there's Just like Star Fox on its own that they don't tap into. And <laughs> Nintendo. Oy. Anyway. Yeah. I would definitely, I mean, out of IDW's current slate of franchises that they do comics for, I would love 
IDW TMNT and IDW Sonic. I think that would be really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why it hasn't happened yet. It's another thing where I'm like, what's going on, Ian? And, 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 and then you look <laughs> at the other IDW crossovers and the, the Transformers My Little Pony one has happened. And I'm just like, twice. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they're owned by the same company, so it's a little yeah, easier yeah. to coordinate and plan, but still. But it was just so wild seeing the covers for that. <laughs> I was like, there was no way this is real. <laughs> uh, it's but I love it. So I love weird. That it is. It's, just, it's so weird. All right. I asked one of my best friends, Landon, who I've shared Sonic memories with my whole life, if he had a question to ask you. And it was if you had the opportunity to bring in any comic character you've written for to become a playable character in the next Sonic game, who would it be and why? Hmm, playable. That's the distinction there. Um, yes. I think the easiest one to translate would be Tangle. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. she was designed to be a, a game character first and foremost. That That's pretty much how all of the characters were. It's like we want them to really have a game mechanic as they're introduced so that they feel natural in this game tie-in comic. And Dangle was built around the idea of gameplay similar to the Avatar character with their grapple shot or whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, running, jumping, and then hook shotting to various points and swing around and just enjoy the freedom of movement. So out of all of them, I think that I think she would be the most immediate and easy to translate into just about any sock title. Mm-hmm. I mean, think of her in Frontiers, where instead oh of like God. a homing shot, you get a grapple shot, and then you can fling yourself into various directions. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be great. And, and I think that's just why Tangle and Whisper just work so well, because I feel like they scratch that itch, both in characterization and just how they fight and everything, that just people wish they got to do more of within Forces. Like and, and then with their archetypes, too, of Tangle being this kind of bubbly go-getter personality and Whisper being having the tragic backstory, which I feel is like the two <laughs> the two archetypes that people who played Forces would have wanted for their <laughs> Avatar characters <laughs> if they had more implementation in the story. Yeah, I think they're just great. Yeah. It, it, I think Whisper would be a fun change of pace for a Sonic mm-hmm. game more of an infiltration stealth sort of type character would be she would be a lot of fun but it would definitely be a very different gameplay while tangle i feel like would fit much more in line with what we expect from sonic especially nowadays so either way though i would take i would take both of them oh my god dove wisp and gear solid is genius i love that (laughs) (laughs) oh that's good oh that's good all right. For both of you, what do you enjoy most about doing the Bumble Cast? I get the to hang out and t- of it. I get to hang out and talk just talk about Sonic and whatever the yak else uh, we want to. I, I get yeah. to, I get to hang out with my buddy, my friend Ian and talk to him. That's the most fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's really nice to just talk after anything that was like oh it's like a really crappy day but hey i get to record the bumblecast that's a fun thing that's something to look forward to <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's why i love i love listening to this because it just feels feels very conversational i'm like two friends are just vibing with the <laughs> with the chaotic fan base <laughs> kind of over- overlooking being like ooh, what tidbits does he have today <laughs> yeah i can't remember when we first started out, were we trying to be a little more structured, a little more formal, or we really did we always want to just go casual? We really, we did try a little bit for some structure at the beginning, but overall, we've kind of been mostly casual. We have had like we have a topic. We had we used to have topics dedicated to each episode, and then mm-hmm. we had the Q and A as a segment afterward. But then after that, it, we. Once we shifted over to exclusively Q and A, that's pretty much it. We just had the, it's just the Q and A kind of directs the show, <laughs> which I think is yeah. what lends to sort of that 
maybe slightly chaotic feelings, just slightly <laughs> off kilter, because who knows what people are going to ask this week. <laughs> I'm going to ask you about the nature of life, death, and God. Next, oh. do you like puppies? <laughs> Why did oh you cancel God. why did you cancel Sonic Underground, Ian Flynn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that episode was great. I remember the one that asked you both the theology question. I was just like, oh my God, that is so deep and profound. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's that's just how this show goes sometimes. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, it's better because of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love it. I love doing this show. That's and I enjoy the um the background aspects of it too. Like I mean, I'm one of those weirdos who actually enjoys editing. I know a lot of people like they, they seem to like dread video and audio editing, but I, I find it kind of cathartic and just I like doing it. So it's a good thing too because we have a lot of content. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I I'm the same way because I had a I had friends in my media program who just if, if they wanted to be filmmakers or like people behind the camera or anything like that, they always hated the editing bay. And like, yeah, I've always been the complete opposite of like, I like the creative process of the editing bay. I feel like you get to really kind of craft a story there. That's really the point where everything kind of comes together to my, in my mind, like this is, this is where, this is where the magic really happens. <laughs> it's what it feels like to me at least. Yeah, just I feel the same way making it when it when it comes to editing and stuff like that so yeah for sure all right to add on to that uh for both of you what's your favorite gift or compliment you've received on your work oh wow mm. I mean this show started off really well <laughs> 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 okay, you mean this episode in particular got it. <laughs> Um, I have received a lot of just super cool fan made things at various shows. Like, I I don't know if you remember, but way back in one of the uh, Sonic Grams, somebody had this photo of their huge paper mache diorama of various badniks and uh, handcrafted models, and they were great. And they actually showed up at one of the shows and gave me one of the Buzz Bombers that they had built and this thing was like football sized at least wow and um i've gotten custom archie sonic lego and this was before there were even was a sonic lego so this is like as custom as it gets custom action figures custom uh plush stuff and it's i feel bad accepting it because i don't know if i'm necessarily going to have room to display it or if it's going to have to go in storage and these are things are works of love and incredible passion and i want them to hold on to it so that they can always have it and show it off but this is also meant for me and it brings them joy to give it to me and i can't say no and ah, i don't know what to do ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez i i don't i don't know if i've gotten as many physical things as ian has but i have gotten a couple um they're not related to the bumblecast at all and that's okay that's fine i don't i don't need anything but um, some video game I music, <laughs> some video game music uh, stuff that I've received um, as gifts has been um, really, it's been really nice. Um, there's a, uh, a friend of mine. I haven't talked to him in a while, though. Um, he's an artist known as Usa. He's a remixer on OCR and he's done uh, a bunch of VGM stuff. He actually sent me a copy of his original album. Um, on vinyl and it is a Ooh. gorgeous vinyl that uh and it, it was it's all self-published and it's just a it's a clearly a, it's a work of love and a work of art it's a fantastic looking piece it's uh the the vinyl itself is bright blue and the cover art is absolutely gorgeous um yeah and I, i'm very happy to own that i have nothing to play it on I can't listen to it, not the not the vinyl, <laughs> but uh, it's just such a cool piece of art, and it's such a it's such a nice gift, you know. I wasn't expecting it. They were just like, "I want to send you this," and I'm like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> I want to send you. Th they want to send it to me as a thank you for, you know, I guess supporting their stuff and everything. And I was like, "Oh, that's that's cool. Thank you." And uh, I've received a couple of other albums, like um, 
Also, after having them on uh, my other show and interviewing them, um, the Videri String Quartet, they were like, you're great. We want to send you our album. And I'm like, all right, cool. I was expecting it like a download link. They're like, no, we want to send you a physical copy of our album. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, so I got that and, uh, it's all signed by them, personalized and everything, which was like really, really, uh, really fun. And, uh, it was a great, uh, interview and talking to them was, uh, was a lot of fun. So yeah, that's something I like was like uh, these, these albums, they're not made by like record companies or they're not mass produced or anything. They're just small time sort of works of love and works of art i really that uh and i appreciate having them for sure so yeah i i I really like things like that so yeah it's always when you get a gift that you can tell there's some there's some craftsmanship to it it definitely feels more special absolutely all right for my final ultimate question that kind of branches off into a like a series of little questions um, I have some questions about Sonic cast members' favorite foods. I know that for Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, their faves are chili dogs, mint, and grapes, respectively. I remember on a previous Bumblecast, you mentioning that Amy would be baked goods, and Shadow would be pizza and gamer food and snacks. <laughs> <laughs> the Doc enjoying anything that is greasy and vile makes complete sense. But I was curious to ask about some other characters and what their favorite foods would be. What do we think for Tangle? I think in a previous episode we said strawberries. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I like that. Yeah, strawberries and ironically, makes a lot of uh, sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of Ian biting his own tongue before he says something he knows he shouldn't. Uh oh. <laughs> Hashtag knowing fumble. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we said tangle with strawberries. We said uh, raspberries, some kind of berry. I think so. Uh, I think we said whisper was like pound cake. Pound cake, yeah. <laughs> and that <laughs> Jules was like the sauciest, messiest chicken wings imaginable. Yeah, oh, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. she manages to devour without getting a single spot on her suit. Hell yeah, um, she's a how pro. Lanolin might have to ask Adam. <laughs> I mean, can't be mutton. That'd be a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> or lamb. Can't be lamb. Yeah, mm-hmm. can't, can't, can't be that. Uh, Dr. Starline. I, I, I don't know why, but just when I was kind of phrasing the question, I was like typing it down on this text file. I just have the mental image of Starline just like sitting in a spinning chair, just eating just like a can of caviar with a spoon. I don't know why, <laughs> but that just seems really fitting for him. Well, sure, that's what he does when he's expecting the hero to walk in, so he can dramatically turn and, mm, I didn't know you were arriving. Would you care for some before your demise? <laughs> <laughs> Except when they actually catch him unaware as he p- swivels around, he's got a can of, like, compressed cheese <laughs> right in his face. <laughs> <laughs> you saw nothing! Nothing was seen by you! Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out! Yeah, or it's a can of SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Oh, Not even heat it up. He just opened the can. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. He doesn't have time to heat it up. What are you? What are you crazy? <laughs> oh, chef boy, oh, do you decadent genius? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell anyone how I live. <laughs> Love that. So good. Oh, that you is, understand uh... the exquisite delight that is a pizza pocket. <laughs> Uh, Totino's <laughs> Totino's Mania. <laughs> God, that character is so much fun. Uh, uh, let's see what were the other characters I had on this list. Uh, Rouge has has she had an like an officially listed food for her? Not publicly. Um, I imagine anything that's like expensive and decadent. Yeah, like my my immediate like knee jerk thought was like creme brulee. Like, like something, something like, like that. that. Whatever feels best doing a dine and dash on. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Ooh, Mighty Ray said macarons. I I, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that's a good answer. I think we've canonically established that Ray is, loves pancakes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I, it, I know that's like that that was a fan thing that be, that's a head cannon, but I think it's I think it's good enough to become official. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I see it. I think that fits perfectly. Um, for the chaotix, I I know you mentioned that they live off top ramen but i also get the impression that <laughs> espio would like really like like nice high quality like ichiban ramen though <laughs> oh sure well yeah he's a freaking nerd <laughs> I mean, he's a freaking he's a freaking weeb of course he would <laughs> although it would be kind of funny if he actually hates <laughs> ramen and stuff <laughs> oh, the irony I got you these on a giri why aren't you eating them I, I like them just fine. Watch, I'm going to eat this delicious jelly-filled donut. <laughs> just think of it as a donut. Uh, uh, good old donut. Yeah, that fits. That fits. <laughs> Charmy? He just likes sweets. I was going like, to say yeah. candy. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, yeah. It, my immediate thought was just like straight up candy. Like, <laughs> like if the box of cereal doesn't have a screaming mascot on it, he doesn't want it. <laughs> Ironically, he doesn't like the one with a B on it because it's not sweet enough. <laughs> I know him, jerk. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that fits for Espion Charmy for Vector? Vanilla. Whoa, dude. <laughs> This is a guest episode, not Bumblecast after dark. Vanilla, you didn't let me finish. Vanilla, vanilla ice cream. You had a period at the end of that word, and you know it. That pause was godlike. I, I mean, oh my god. Oh, that that's better than any like legitimate food that I could have thought it was the actual answer. <laughs> Why are you booing me? I'm not wrong. <laughs> this, man is, this man is spitting facts. <laughs> I can see um, Vector getting one of Eggman's giant photorealistic sandwiches and just having one bite and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah. Just putting it all in his maw at once. Yeah, yeah. I see that. <laughs> God, now I want one of the IDW artists to like actually like draw that. <laughs> Like, just, like, as an aside in one of the panels. He just, like, picks it up, bounces on and on his lower jaw, closes his mouth. Gone. Yeah. I mean, he is a crocodile. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's, just a, that's just a fun image. Uh, Blaze? I've always, I've always thought, like, curry when, when, when I think of Blaze. Actually, I just got a note on this recently. She doesn't like hot food. Ironic, really? I, the irony there. I I don't know if that's supposed to be irony because of her fire powers, or if it's like this running thing in uh, Japanese pop culture that cats don't like spicy food. Maybe it's both. But, hmm. It could be both, but she doesn't like hot things, hot drinks, hot food. She likes things cool in temperature. So I would imagine stuff like. Uh, Small like finger sandwiches or cold sandwiches or cold soups Ooh. or anything like room temperature, just really, you know, high quality. She's a princess, but you know, yeah, no curries, no like hot roast stuff, mostly cool things. Interesting. That's so different than from what I would have thought. And and then yeah, you said like tidy sandwiches, and I just immediately think Professor Pickle. <laughs> 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 Yummy. Tiny, tiny sandwiches. And then the last character I wanted to ask for was Styx, genuinely, because I have no idea. <laughs> I would have no idea where even to start for Styx. <laughs> she w- eats only the most truly organic, self-grown stuff. Mm. Because you can't trust it from the grocery store. They just put an organic label on it to make you think it's organic, and then they double the price. No, no, no. She knows how big farming works. And you can't trust anything that 
isn't labeled organic because it's got the chemicals and the GMOs and whatever else they put in those kind of foods. You can't trust that. The only thing you can trust is yourself and your own garden and what you made yourself and the occasional trip to Burger King. Cause I mean, you can't live on like homegrown lettuce alone. <laughs> you mean mad burger, not Burger King. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And I also love how like how like the immediate three chat answers were concrete bugs and apples. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh. immediately those were the first three. <laughs> concrete is a is a good one. Just straight up rocks. Uh I mean it never goes bad. <laughs> Styx doesn't eat. She's too suspicious of all food. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, thank both of you for, for this. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for sponsoring the show. Is there anything you want to give a shout out to send anyone elsewhere after the show wraps up? Oh yeah, sure. If you want more videos where I talk about stuff like this, you can check me out on youtube.com slash Kaizen Amen. And that's pretty much it for me. Awesome. Cool. 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 Kyle, do you have anything that here to add to the end? Nope. Let's get out of All here. Right. Thank you again to Kaizen Amen for sponsoring this episode. If you want a guest spot of your own, head over to patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Bye! Laters. Sorry about that. We're getting no problem, crossed. no problem. We've been having a we've been having a great old time in here. Oh, I'm sure all sorts of lovely <laughs> topics like backstabbing. Yes. And smear campaign <laughs> these aren't things these are these aren't things i wouldn't say to your face ian i know that's true <laughs> <laughs> you know this and you know i'm right <laughs> i never said you were wrong okay good 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 i mean i mean you can say whatever you want about me well i mean you're probably right Sorry, one second. The microphone is falling down. <laughs> Bye, microphone. See you later. <sighs> um, the microphone was like, this answer is not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> you can't judge me. You're inanimate. Um, <laughs>You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T-Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at BumbleKing.com and KNGI.org. Um, you said two moments in Frontiers made you cry. Which ones? Uh, hmm, okay. Uh, the moment between uh, Tails and Sonic, where he's that's like, kind of a given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just because I've I've always wanted Tails to have that, like I'm going to college moment with Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> that's always how, how I viewed it. it. Was just it's like <laughs> it's always how I viewed it. It's, it's like it's like Stephen Blue's clues. He's, he's like I'm leaving you. <laughs> I'm up to my next adventure. Um, and I just loved everything about that interaction. And then it was Sage's reaction to that that just broke me in that moment. I was just like, mm. oh, that's that's awesome. And then uh, Eggman at the end of the game, because just him looking up at the stars, realizing his little girl isn't coming back, and then just him hanging his head, but then that like him like clenching his fist like I'm gonna bring her back. I was just like, Oh, you made the doc a dad. How dare you? <laughs> you you made him you made him an almost <laughs> character you feel bad for and a likable character almost. <laughs> even though he's an awful, horrible person. Yeah, yeah. But the but yeah, yeah. This and then um <laughs> the moment between uh uh, Amy and Sonic in the fields definitely made me a bit misty. So I feel like those were those were my moments. But yeah, yeah, you you got me good. <laughs>
Yeah. Good, good, good. Yep. Definitely. It, it, it was I, a lot of heart, I wasn't... heartwarming, heart-wrenching stuff. 